Okay, so Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Good evening to all respected uh, officers and the students So welcome to KNMS Town Hall for, for all KNMS students So without uh, before we start our session today, I think it's better for us to recite a uh, recitation of dua so al fatiha okay so without any further ado i think uh, we are in constraint of times because we start at 6 pm so uh, we can start straightforward to any concerns that the students want to raise so yeah, the students can raise your concerns and all your concerns and questions will be asked to the respective deputy deans and deans. Or maybe you can you can type it in the chat box. So I will read it one by one. Okay, so the first question from Brother Azrai Akbar. How will the hybrid work next semester? Okay, so maybe uh, the officer, the dean or Dr. Izani can explain about this. Would you like me to answer? Prof. or would you like to answer? Or oh, Prof. Rani would like to answer? <laughs> can, can we get a few more questions? Uh, yeah, better. Yeah, All right, right. Chat. Okay, so we will wait. Okay, so thank you, Brother Azrai, for the questions. But yeah, please, anyone who want to raise any question, this is your platform. So if, if you raise your question in the WhatsApp status, in the IG story, no one will hear. So this is the platform for you to, to raise your question through proper platform. So yeah, this is chance for you to, to ask directly to the Dean and the Deputy Dean. Maybe while waiting for our students to um, warm up, <laughs> I'd like to uh, invite everyone. Thank you, first of all, uh, for joining us. Uh, we're actually trying to make this town hall session a regular thing, uh, regardless whether <laughs> it's virtual or not virtual. It's just that the past few months I have been unwell. And that is why it's, I think I've only done one town hall with the previous tenure. And then after that, I went sick and then I kind of forgot. But uh, inshallah, I think the new MCS will uh, more than willing to remind me from now onwards. Okay, so we've got a few more questions. All right, so a few more questions. I think uh, specifically asked by the international friends. So, okay. <laughs> okay, the, the students starting warm up. Okay, so maybe maybe the Dr. Izani or Dr. Gary want to, uh, want to, question, want to answer this question. Uh, okay. I think I try to give an overall overall statement first. Uh, what we are, uh, what we are trying to do uh, for, uh, for next semester, lah. Okay, and what are the instruct instructions? Not just from the, uh, not just from the university, but also from the, but also from the ministry. Okay. Uh, Oh, how how's the rain over there? <laughs> I'm I'm in Kuantan. So oh, tak tahu oh, what was happening. Story. Huh? Yeah, Nampak yeah. banyak yeah. banyak pokok matah. Yes, yeah. pokok. Uh, okay, so this why I'm late. Yes, Ilai Ahmad. Hari Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, okay, so thank you everyone for uh, for being here and coming to the uh, and coming to the meeting. So. Uh, it gave me great pleasure for, for you to, uh, for me to be uh, for me to be here. Uh, I'm I'm currently in Kuantan in in a, in a hotel room. <laughs> I just just get back from uh, some programs that we have in uh, uh, Kuantan campus. Okay, so I think uh, all of you have gotten the the message that was uh, uh, that was announced by uh, by by MSES with regard to the conduct of classes in the uh, in the next semester yeah. uh, okay so uh, in initially what happened is that uh, okay so if uh, just for your information in the university we have a few 
uh, we have a few kind of committee or, or meetings that uh, that decide on the uh, academic matters of the uh, of the university okay so the highest uh, the highest authority is the senate okay and then before the senate we have uh, a council which is called the uh, dean's council uh, dean's council meeting Okay, uh, so the, the roles of a dean's council meeting in a way is to uh, is to advise the senate with regard to the uh, with regard to the academic matters, and uh, usually it is it, it is the senate's are the one that's going to decide on the uh, on academic matters. Okay, so I think uh, about two three weeks ago, basically last uh, dean's council meeting, it has been uh, decided by the dean's council. Okay, so what is Dean's Council? Dean's Council is a council of all the deans in the uh, in the university. Okay, so uh, in addition to the deans, we also have uh, uh, directors that related to uh, academic matters in 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 the, in the council. Okay, so what was decided uh, in the Dean's Council meeting number one, two thousand twenty two, it has been agreed that all students except those with health and travel restrictions are expected to return are expected to return to campus for semester 2 2021 2022 okay so uh, so all students okay but there are exception on the exception the exception are those with health concern or health restrictions and those with traveling restrictions because we know that they are there are students that that's going to have uh, visa issues or there are there are countries that may not be able to uh, enter Malaysia because of uh, because of uh, immigration regulations. Okay, so uh, because of these exceptions, the kuliah uh, uh, are required uh, to provide uh, teaching and learning arrangements uh, must accommodate uh, those students who are not able to uh, return to campus. Uh, and because students uh, are required to return to campus, the kulia are also uh, are also required to finalize preparations for for the second semester. Okay, so that will be able to uh, observe all the required SOP that uh, that issued by the NATMA. NATMA is national. How <laughs> uh, uh, something 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 <laughs> of Malaysia. So you can you can Google that. I forgot what is the uh, uh, what is the full names of of Natma lah. So basically, Natma is the uh, 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 is the authority that that is responsible for emergencies, disaster, and all this all this COVID thing. So they are the one that's going to issue uh, all the different circular what can and cannot be what can and cannot be done and what are the uh, and what are the SOP. Okay, so again, uh, based on the uh, based on the letter from the, based on the instruction from DCM, uh, DCM has agreed that all students except those with health and traveling restriction are expected to return to campus for semester 2 2021 20, uh, 2022 uh, the university is going to come up with a uh, with a, uh, a general uh, with, with an announcement uh, later okay, after uh, they have had the final say from the uh, from the from the ministry ministry of higher ministry of higher education okay because th there are certain things that have to be uh, that has to be ironed out okay, even if we, we even if you uh, even if uh, for the students who are already uh, on campus they, you, you'll be able to see that the, some of the canteen are still not open okay so there, there are a lot of things that, that need to be done for this for this coming month in order to prepare uh, for student to for student to return to to campus okay so uh, that's the first one all students are required to return except those with health and traveling uh, traveling restrictions uh so in terms of classes that what is going to happen uh uh the, the, what, what is going to happen is uh one of the things that that, uh, <clears throat> that that we are thinking of is that uh we are going to give a lot of 
and we are going to empower a lot of the lecturers on what they uh, what they want to do. Okay, but okay, when 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 we have a lot of students in campus, okay, uh, there there's going to be uh, there's going to be face to face interaction. Now there there will be classes that conducted uh, that conducted face to face, but it may be it's going to be different from what uh, uh, from what you have experience previously for those who are in third year and fourth year. For those who are in the first year, second year, so you may not even know what are the, what are the experience of the, uh, of the third year and the fourth year. Okay? I think because uh, uh, some of you have been having online classes for almost, uh, for almost two years. Okay? Uh, uh, so the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to limit uh, class size. Uh, cl class size is going to be smaller because class size are smaller uh, then then we'll be able to have that uh, physical dis physical distancing of uh, of students okay so most of classes are able to fit about uh, currently about 50 to 60 students so we are trying to limit the the number of students in classes to to about 30 to uh, 30 to 35 so because we have because we have limit the number of uh, class, we have, because we have limit class size, uh, then we are able to get that physical uh, distancing. So if let's say there are classes that that's going to be big, what is going to happen? Most probably, so we, I'm not sure for, I'm not going to say for sure, but most probably what's going to happen is that there will still be some online element, okay? But you will have. You you may you are going to have a tutorial session with uh with the lecturers. So so you you are going still going to have a face to face interaction between the uh, between student and student and student and uh, student and lecturer. Okay. So currently we are still looking at the the class registration. Okay. And to see how can we uh, how can we accommodate the the classes. Okay. How how are we going to be able to follow all the SOPs that's going to be uh, uh, that's going to be issued by the by the ministry, by the university, and by uh, and by NATMA. Okay, so other other one you are roti, no? Okay, okay, I guess, I guess so. That's the generally that that's what is going to that's what's going to happen. Okay, so now let's look at uh, some of the question. Uh. The chat, yeah. So let me start from the. Let me just go through to see whether the question are similar or what. Will oh, the competition? Hybrid, yeah. How will the hybrid work next semester? Is it compulsory for international students to attend next semester? Can international students are facing visa problem attend online classes? Okay. So let let me answer the uh, international student international student first. Okay. So as uh, has been said. Okay, student that uh, international student that are having uh, traveling restrictions, they are not able to, uh, they are not able to come back, uh, okay, because of a uh, different reason. So, so we, we will have to, we will have to accommodate these students. How will this arrangement be? Okay, so they, they are, there are different ideas on how to do, uh, on how to uh, arrange uh, the. Uh, the students who are not able to who are not able to come okay so one one of the idea is for okay uh, we are going to have uh, the face to face classes but for the international students who are not able to come so we we may just use the previous years uh, previous year previous semesters or last semesters uh, materials for you to uh, uh, for you to study, okay, so that's the okay, that that's going to be the, the, yeah, the okay, and then there there will be assignments uh, that's going to be given by the uh, by the lecturer, okay. So, but but then it, it will still depend on how the lecturers want to do the uh, uh want, want want to do the classes, okay, with students who are with students who are online, okay. Uh, we are also thinking of if let's say we have a large number of international students. They are not able to. They are not able to return. Then we may have one, uh, just one specific section for uh, for international students, okay, where the class going to be 
where the class is going to be fully uh, fully online. Okay, but still, it's going to depend on the number of students registering for uh, for different classes. So, so so for now, what what we are what we are currently doing is we are looking at the uh, uh, at the registration to, to see. Uh, how many students, and we also need to know whether a student are able to uh, to return or not. Okay, because we because uh, we don't want to have cases where, uh, okay, even though there are no traveling restriction, the students say that they have uh, they have traveling restrictions. Okay, because we can communicate with international office and we'll be able to know okay whether there are issues with traveling or uh, traveling or not. Okay, so that's in terms of international students. Yeah. Uh, students who are facing visa problem attend online classes. So I, I think I answered the question. So uh, the thing now is, with regard to visa problem, you 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 need to uh, to try to solve your visa problem as uh, as soon as possible. Okay, people, may, uh, you may ask why is it that we need to to have these face to face uh, classes, even though we have been doing online for a long time. Uh, what what if, if we uh, all programs that uh, that are offered by the university are accredited by MQA and accredited by uh, some programs are accredited by MQA and by professional agency. Okay? And the accreditation is for uh, is for conventional classes, is for face to face classes, or at, or at least a blended type of learning rather than rather than an online learning, okay? So, because the license that's given to us is not for online learning, okay? Uh, so, because of that, we cannot, uh, and we should not offer uh, online learning to, uh, uh, to, to, to all the students uh, that, uh, that we have in the Kulia and that we, have in the, that we have in the university. There are only a few, there are only a few universities that, uh, that are given the license to do, uh, to do online learning. And when, and when the university are doing online learning, uh, they have the appropriate facilities uh, uh, for online learning. So what we have been doing is uh, for these past two years is because emergency. So we have to figure out okay, uh, by hook or by crook how to, uh, how to deliver our, uh, our content, how, to, how to, how to, to deliver the materials. Okay? But we do not have the appropriate uh, uh, the appropriate uh, apparatus, the appropriate mechanism, the appropriate tools for us to do uh, to do uh, online learning. So that's why okay, we need to have students to uh, to be back on uh, to be back on campus. Okay, our local students allowed to opt for online instead of face to face due to safety concern. Okay, so if if you go back to the uh, to the letter from. Uh, 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 from DCM or this council meeting. So only those who are having, let me read again, health and traveling restrictions, okay, uh, uh, are allowed to, okay, uh, uh, can be accommodated, okay, uh, if they do not want to, uh, if they do not want to return to, to return to campus, okay. Uh, because if you are talking about safety reasons, uh, or you're talking about safety concerns, what we have been, okay, what, what the Kulia is going to be doing, what the university is going to be, be doing, they are going to ensure that uh, every SOP is going to be is going to be followed. Okay, so my question, if let's say you are saying that it is because of safety concern, then my question to you is that uh, when you are home. Have you ever gone to the shopping complex? Have you ever gone to the supermarket? Okay, so if your answer is you stay home, close door, you never go out, okay, then, then, we, then we may be able to consider. Okay, so if your answer is that you have been going out, you have, okay, you have been using my sejahtera, you have, uh, you have, you have go to supermarket, you have go to cinema, you have go to anywhere else and and when you go there, you follow all, uh, all of the SOP. So similarly, in the university, we are also doing the we are also doing the same thing, and we follow it, following all the SOPs that given by the uh, by the ministry and by the uh, by NATMA, okay? Okay, the highest authority in the uh, in the countries. 
okay, so I guess we maybe Brother Hamiru can also, if you're like scrolling through the chat, so if there are some issues that aren't yeah, answered yeah. yet, you can always inform us. All right, so uh, for Sister Nor Ain Shazila, uh, she asked about the amount of students. I believe Dr. Gary already mentioned this. Uh, for for normal class except LT, 35 students are allowed for one class. And then, uh, I believe the question, how the hybrid class can facilitate the students who can return to the campus? Dr. Gary also have uh, answered that question. Uh, but <laughs> there are one question, maybe regarding, uh, regarding to the yeah. prereq. Yeah, we have a lot of questions about these 21 credit hours, right? Yeah. Okay. Can, okay. So, uh, okay. so uh, let me try to answer that. So again, like, like I said before, uh, all we have in the university and, and in the Kulia, they are accredited by MQA. MQA is Malaysian Qualification, uh, Malaysian Qualification Agencies. Okay. And with the accreditation from Malaysian Qualification Agencies, then other qualification agencies, uh, most of other qualification agencies in other countries will also uh, accept the programs that are offered by the university. Okay? Uh, and with the accreditation from MQA for Malaysia, you'll be able to apply for job okay? for, from a government job, MQA, or you will be able to apply for, for job lab because most of the uh, most of the companies going to see whether the uh, whether the program is accredited or not. Okay, so so what has happened? Uh, I think a few years, a few years, a few months ago, uh, we have the 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 Senate. Okay, so that is the highest authority with regard to academic matters. The Senate has endorsed new SAPER or Student Academic Performance Evaluation regu Regulations or Rules. Okay, so. One of the statement in that uh, in that regulation is that the the maximum hours the maximum credit hours a student can take is twenty credit hours. So there is no okay, there is no a problem with the issue. Okay, with the, there is no problem with the system. Okay, so it is the because uh, because the the new student academic performance evaluation uh, regulation say that the maximum that student can take is 20 credit hours. So the system has been changed such that the maximum is 20 credit hours. Okay. So then people going to ask, why is it 20? Why is it 20? Because MQA say that 20 credit hours is the maximum. So we follow the MQA regulation. Okay. Uh, why 20 credit, why MQA say 20 credit? hours okay so if you if you ever look at your course outline okay so if you look at your course outline one of the column on the course outline you have what you call slt student learning time okay so usually a three credit hours course the student learning time is 100 uh, about 120 student learning time okay so what is 120 student learning time? 120 student learning time mean that we are expecting, the lecturers is expecting that the student is going to put about 120 hours of their time for that course. So this include the face-to-face -face class instruction. This include the amount of time that you take for you to do your homework. This include the amount of time that is expected for you to read the textbook or to read whatever the reading material that is given by the uh, by the lecturers. Okay, so if the uh, if a uh, three credit hours a class is one hundred twenty uh, student learning time. So if uh, if let's say you take 18 credit hours or about uh, six class, then your student learning time should be about, about 720 hours. Okay, so 720 hours. So if you divide 720 hours by 
14 times 50. Okay, 14 is 14 weeks. Okay, one semester have about 14 weeks. Okay, and one week you are required to study for five days. So you are talking about uh, five, four, about, about 70, what? Uh, about you, you, all, you have about 70 days, okay, in, in a semester, right? Okay, that you are required to study. So 70 days time, let's say one day you are required to study for eight hours. So then this is equal to 560 hours. So if you are required to study eight hours per day for 14 weeks, and, and in a week we are just looking at five days. So you are required to study for 560 hours. Okay, so where else if let's say you take six classes, you are required to study for 700 720 hours okay so because of all those calculations okay the mqa come up with a regulation say that the maximum hours the maximum credit hours a student can take is 20 credit hours so so we have all those uh, we have all those calculation and that's why we have all those S, uh, slt okay so based on the uh, based on the requirement from from mqa you know so that so, so the question now is what if you have to take 21 credit hours for you to or more than 20 credit hours for you to graduate okay so usually this uh, for bachelor of economic bachelor of business or bachelor of islamic finance uh, it is not a big issue because the credit hours for you to graduate is only about 120 to 130 so even if you take about uh, if you take about 15, 16 credit hours per semester, you will be able to graduate on time. So the issue is going to be more on the Bachelor of Accounting, where the, for you to be able to graduate, the total credit hours is, is about 100, 150 or 150 something. So there will be some semester where you will have to take 21 credit hours. Okay, so because of that, there is a clause in the subpair he say that if let's say a student need to take more than 20 credit hours so the student will need to get uh, approval from the approval from the dean okay so approval from the dean does not mean that you send email to the dean and the dean and the dean going to approve uh, from the email lah. okay so so there is a, there is a procedures that you have to do. So you have to communicate with your, you may need to communicate with your academic advisor and then communicate, then uh, you, you may need to ask the academic unit of the kulia saying that you want to take more than 20 credit hours. Okay, in fact, they already have a form that, uh, they already have a Google form that you will be able to, you'll be able to fill up. Okay, if you want to take more than 20 credit hours. Okay, and what's going to happen is that, uh, they are going to see whether there is uh, a merit for the case okay whether they should allow you to take more than uh, more than 20 credit hours so if let's say the academic unit think that you should be able uh, you should be given permission to take uh, more than 20 credit hours then they will uh, they will leave the restriction now. okay and what we are trying to do now is for uh, for accounting student we are we are going to try to have a blanket approval for all uh, for all accounting students uh, rather than 20 is going to become uh, is going to become 21 so why 21 because most of the courses that you are going to take are, are three credit hours okay and then you, sometimes you do have an issues with uh, with that uh, uh, courses okay, with koku courses okay but that leeway may be given to only accounting student because the credit hours that they have to take is much much higher than uh, compared to the other three program okay bachelor of economic business and uh, islamic is islamic finance okay so if let's say okay, you really uh, plan your your study you should be able to complete your study within time okay even about three and three and a half you may be able to complete in three and a half years or maybe three years if you are uh, if you never fail any subject lah. so if let's say you fail any subject you have to repeat then you may have uh, you may have some issues lah. okay so that's with regard to uh, that's with regard to that uh, 20 uh, um, 
to register more than 20 credit more than 20 credit hours okay so for your students uh, what will happen to them they only manage to reserve the subject i think i think uh, many students ask on the mahala allocation of mahala where where they will stay in the the process okay so the mahala uh, i have i just talked to uh, the person in charge at the mahala let me apa benda dia tulis tadi okay so for mahala Okay, uh, you can apply uh, for Mahalah online. Okay, in fact, I, and students are given options uh, uh, to choose okay, which Mahalah do they want uh, do they want to stay? Okay, do they prefer to stay? And with regard to the Nusaiba, the project it is expected to complete by the by the end of this month. So Mahalah uh, Nusaiba should be. Uh, one of the choices that you can uh, that you can choose now. Okay, so so yeah, you you can uh, for now the the response is you can apply online. But from what I've uh, from what I've seen, there there are some there are, there are still some issue with regard to uh, with regard to Mahala. So what I'm going to be uh, what I'm going to do to tomorrow. Yeah, I'm going to talk to the uh, to the person in China because I've seen over here uh, some students have given say that when they try to register, it's not your time. Please check M O R R schedule and everything. So I'll try. Uh, for for Mahala, I'm not able to answer in detail because uh, I still need to talk to Mahala tomorrow. Okay, with regard to uh, to the to the specific what need to be you know, what need to be done. Okay, uh, when students want to register for Mahala. Right, so uh, maybe maybe the some some of the students your student ask where where is the link, because as you mentioned just now, the person in charge state that the link already provided, but the students maybe some students. Oh, because for some students, uh, especially the students who are. Uh, Okay, who joined in 2019 would. Okay, so, so I think what we can do, I, I'll try to inform Apna, MSES, and then MSES may be able to, to help later tomorrow, okay, with regard to the with regard to Mahala. Okay, because I think most of the, the newer students have never tried to register to Mahala, right? Okay, only those who are in the third and fourth year have uh, have had some experience with Mahala. And then there are questions uh, by Brother Razmi. Uh, maybe the maybe you can explain on the rotational basis for course that more than thirty five students. Maybe, maybe how it works. Uh, I I think it's best uh, if let's say the lecturer himself or herself. Okay, when 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 you come in and uh, when you come into the class where where the because every lecturer may have different ways of different ways of doing things. So in general, what's going to happen is if let's say there are tu tutorials, so may, they may they may break up the the classes into okay, in, into different groups. Okay, different groups going to come on different group going to come on different day. Okay, where um, most probably the lectures the, some of the lectures is going to be uh, is going to be online. All right, thank you, Dr. Gary. So and then the question is. Uh, Sister Diana have asked how many students will be limit in one class. I think Dr. Gary have answered that. 35 students for one class. How the Kulia will handle this? Kulia will implement the SOP that uh, regulated by NATMA and MKN. And then there are a few questions that, and concern that have been raised by the students. They ask why the announcement of the mode for the next semester is announced during the last, the end of this semester, why it's not during maybe in the middle or uh, during the early of this semester. Okay, so basically we, you are talking about uh, COVID time. Uh, no one know what is going to happen uh, next month. No one know what's going to happen. Uh, it's going to happen uh, two months from now. 
So you are talking about you you want to have the announcements to be made uh, early semester in sometime in bila uh, our semester start in October, right? Yeah. So at that time we don't even know when it is uh, when this uh, when these issues is going to be uh, is going to be resolved. So for sure uh, we are not able to uh, give uh, make the announcement uh, at that time. Okay, so the, the 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 issue is not uh so why do we why do we make the announcement today uh, or or this time period one month before and less than more than about one month before the, the semester start okay so one of the thing is that the SOP from the Ministry of Higher Education is that the announcement have to be made one month before semester start. Okay, so, so you are talking about one month before semester starts. Semester is going to start on the, I think on the 10th of, uh, 10 of March. Okay, so, uh, so one month before the 10th of, of March is sometime in, uh, is the 10th of February. Okay, so that, that's one. Okay, so that is the, uh, the answer if you, are, yeah, if you are talking about the ministry. Lah. Okay, so, so basically if you want to have uh, a longer time period of uh, announcement, we, we don't even know what is going to happen. Okay, because you are talking about sometime in uh, sometime in October, something that is uh, basically we don't we, we don't even know. So that's why uh, only recently that uh, we think that uh, a student can uh, uh, can have face to face classes, even if you are talking about uh, secondary school, all the sec most not all I think all the secondary school have already have face to face classes. Okay, even primary school have already started their have already started their face to face classes. Okay, so because schools have already started face to face classes, and we think that uh, it is already relatively safe. Okay, compared to some compared to uh, what we have in uh, what we have in October. So that's why we. That's why we have that announcement uh, sometime the end, uh, sometime uh, uh, this past uh, this past few weeks. Okay, so it's not about uh, 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 when the when we should do the announcement. is is the time when we think that it is uh, safe for student to uh, face for student to come back. Okay, so if let's say you are not able to come back, uh, they are they are the there are the means, okay. So that's why we say if if let's say you have traveling restrictions, then uh, then we may have uh, uh, the online classes. Okay? But most probably, what's going to happen is is that the government is going to say that the we are going to enter into a pandemic uh, situation, uh, not pandemic, endemic situation. So when it is something that is endemic, we have to accept that it is part of the it is part of our life. So it's going to be similar to uh, dengue cases. Okay, so we know that uh, dengue is uh, uh, is dangerous. Okay, but we have to uh, uh, we have to take the risk. Okay, so uh, yeah. other thing that you can do, you can also student can also apply for study leave. So there are a lot of different ways trying to uh, trying to handle the matters. If you think that you 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 don't want to come, yeah. Uh, excuse me. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, I'm a student uh, one seven one four six six five. Uh, so I'm now taking nineteen credit hours for the next semester, uh, and I have only a curriculum uh, subject will offer in the short semester. But I have only one subject left, which is I cannot add it. I have already uh, filled the link, but no respond until now. Uh, have, have you filled up the, the Google form or not? Yes, exactly. But no uh, response then, since last uh, week. Then they, they are still looking at whether... Uh, I'm a graduate student, but yeah, I have only they, one, they, one they, are, they are still uh, looking at whether uh, they, are, they are going to allow you to register or not. Because for them to leave you, uh, to leave, uh, to increase the credit hours from 20 to 21 is not something that just uh, of a click of button. Okay. Uh, they have they have a lot of things that they have to 
uh, that they have to do. Okay. And then the, the number of students who are applying for uh, an increase in the credit hours to exceed the limit of 20 uh, uh, is a lot. Okay. So they have to do student by uh, student by students. Okay. Uh, uh, so maybe you can you can email the you can email academic unit uh, uh, to to see whether uh, they have gotten your application or not. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank uh, you. Yeah, thank you, brother. So moving forward, uh, I think this is the most uh, few uh, among the important question that student always ask: what what will be the date to return? What will be the date to return? Uh, okay. A classes is going to start on the, um, on, I think on the 10th of March, right? 7, 7 of March. Oh, oh 7 of March. Uh, classes is going to start on the 7 of, of March. Okay, so basically you need to be there before 7 now. Okay, but what we are going to do, because we know that there are about, about 1,000 1, something students who never set foot uh, on the uh, on the Kulia, never set foot on the university. So most probably what we have, what we are going to do, we have to figure out how to, uh, to do some kind, some kind of uh, ta'aruf okay, before the uh, before the start of classes. So maybe what we have to do is okay, we have to provide information for you uh, uh, to come, okay, and most probably you have to come much earlier lah in order for uh, uh, in order for the for the kuliah to uh, to to have a ta'aruf for the student who have never never set their foot uh, on campus. So we, we, are, we, we are, but for you to, uh, for, uh, since class is going to start on the seven, you have to be here before the seven. All right, so uh, maybe, maybe to add, maybe the university haven't put any schedule on. Yeah, so no. currently there is no schedule with regard to return. Uh, how student how students should return because uh, uh, we because we, we are still one month before uh, uh, before March okay so so currently if you look at the SOP uh, there is no restriction of movement student so uh, you can go anywhere everywhere. So for, for now there is no there is no schedule saying when you should come. Okay, so right. if let's say the university come up with, with a schedule, then we are going to come up with the uh, with the announcement. So for now, uh, you have to come before the uh, before the seven. Okay. So thank you, sir. Uh, next, moving forward to next question, since we are running out of time, uh, are students without fully vaccinated? Or without booster allowed to go back to the campus, or maybe uh, we talk either anti vaccine or maybe the students who are un unable to take the vaccine yeah. because of maybe some reason. Okay, so that that's uh, that, that is one of the concerns that we have. So what we can do now is we 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 have to follow the. A statement that's given by by NATMA, okay, by the National Emergency or something. Okay, so basically the statement say that uh, uh, I think the statement say that you can uh, you are not forced to take the vaccine. Okay, so. Uh, whether the student uh, can be allowed to return or not, the student can be allowed to return, but okay, okay. following the statement by NATMA, similar, uh, what need to be done is if you are not vaccinated, okay, then you will need to be tested regularly. Okay, so the student will have to be tested regularly. It may be every day. The student will have to be uh, the student will have to be tested. Okay, so if let's say uh, uh, if it is tested reg uh, every day, then if there are positive cases, then we can identify the positive cases uh, very very fast. Right. So uh, as we know, the the kid 
to test is not cheap and maybe a burden for a few families. Yeah. So, uh, that will the university cover that cost or is if, it if the student choose not to be vaccinated, then the then the kit will not be covered because the vaccination is free. All right. So I understood. Okay. So moving forward to yes, next. Sir. Uh, yes. I actually have a doubt. Uh, so what will be the mode of examination? Like if we have, if we can't come due to travel restrictions, how will the final exams and all the assessment will be? Will it be conducted online or uh, offline, especially the final exam? Uh, if it is online, then it's going to be, because I, because I, uh, because you are talking about something that's going to happen in what in six more months. So I'm just this is just a conjecture what is going to happen. Okay. Because uh, what is going to happen uh, when, when we have this hybrid, you we are going to have a lot of students that is going to take the exam face to face. Okay. The exam that you are going to take most probably is going to be online, but it's going to be much easier for the uh, uh, for the lecturers to monitor the to monitor the student uh, who are taking the exam online. So most, so, so the exam may be conducted, uh, may be conducted online. So I cannot, I cannot give, a, uh, I cannot say for 100% what is going to happen because we are talking about something uh, that's going to happen in, in, in six more months. So, so they, they, there may be a case where they may be what happened uh, uh, in, in a few months, we, we may not have any traveling restriction anymore. So when there is no traveling restriction, then then maybe all the students will will be asked to will be asked to return to campus. So so what I can say is up until what up until March or up until uh, up until April, this is what is what's going to happen. Okay, and what's going to be the exam? So you may need to discuss with the uh, with the lecturers that uh, uh, that is teaching the that is teaching the class. Right. Okay, so you may not have exam. So because some uh, some some courses only have final assessment, right? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. So suppose uh, I am uh, learning in online section, the special se uh, section with the online mode of education, and uh, I am planning to return maybe towards the end of the semester. So if I come there, uh, will I be transferred to an uh, offline section or will I stay in the online section itself? That, that is going to depend on uh, how the classes are conducted. It may be that all this, it may be that you have one specific a course that is online. Uh, it may be that you are the only one in the class that is online. So it's going to uh, it's going to depend on how many students uh, registering for course. If you are, if you are talking about taking a fourth year course, so most probably there there will only be one or two student international student that are taking that course. So if that is the case, most probably will not be able to have. Uh, a specific course that a specific online course for just two students. So most probably it's going to be uh, you will be you you will be online, but all the other students going to be is going to be offline. So it's and uh, there are a lot of things that we have to that we have to look at. So if let's say uh, you are the only one online in the class, all the other students are face to face. So what's going to happen most probably is that all the other students are going to have a face-to-face -face exam. You will have an online exam, okay? But since you are the only one who are uh, online, it's going to be much, much easier for, uh, for the lecturer to monitor uh, your, uh, your exam. All right, thank you. Okay, uh, so moving forward to next question. Uh, one brother asked, in an event of emerging cluster, in case, uh, is there any contingency plans by the Kulia? Uh, usually, if let's say there are cases, what's going to happen is that uh, the 
uh, the health and wellness uh, center is going to come and assess the uh, and assess the situation uh, to see uh, what need to be uh, what need to be done. Okay, whether everyone's going to go, uh, whether every class is going to go online, okay, where everyone's going to uh, is going to stay in the mahala. So it is going is going to be is going to depend on the case. Okay. How severe are the uh, how severe are the case? Okay, thank you. Uh, one one brother asked about selected courses like the LM in Tilawa. Is that the is that in the power of KNMS or it's depend on the selected? Yeah, it, it, it depend on selected. I think selected will also be online. Uh, UNGS courses will also eh, no, selected courses will be face to face. UNGS courses will be face to face. If let's say you uh, if uh, if you are not able to do it face to face, then you will not be able to do that UNGS courses. Or most probably selected will be uh, is the same. But I know for sure uh, UNGS will be face to face. Uh, sir, yep. uh, I faced some, some problems about my visa, so I will apply for new visa and uh, I will be, I can be in Malaysia on April or end of April. So uh, can I join the classes from online until April and can I uh, yeah. join face-to-face sure. -face class after April? Yeah. You, you'll start with online and then you uh, when you are here, it's going to be face-to-face. -face. Okay, thank you. Uh, Assalamualaikum, sir. Uh, hello, can yes. you hear me? Uh, yes. I have a question. Uh, since the Kulia have decreased the capacity of the classes, so are there going to be any up with Kulia are going to open more classes since like second year student uh, many of us are unable to prereq subjects since uh, it's already full when we tried to prereq it uh, last week. And if uh, the Kulia aren't going to open more classes for us, uh, does the Kulia going to announce it in iMaklum or any KMNS platform? Yeah, so we are still looking at the number of students registering for classes. So you will see that they are, they are a lot of students uh, are asking for more classes then we'll figure out how to uh, if let's say we uh, we open up new classes most probably we'll uh, we'll make announcement maybe through mcs or uh, knms website all right so i believe uh, uh, if if any of the students want to ask any question you just can ask open up your mic and then ask our dean assalamu alaikum sir alaikum salam uh, iphone question how about the graduate students are they the same for yeah, the undergraduate the students is much, the, the classes are, are much smaller so there is no issue with regard to with regard to physical distancing so postgraduate student, I think all the classes are going to be face to face. Okay? And the same thing, if you have traveling restrictions, then uh, then we, we have to figure out how to do it. Mm, okay, thank you so much. So a uh, few, few students asked on off campus. So well, if they, they, they are home, are near to IUM, but they choose not to stay in the Mahalla, Rather than uh, then stay to in their house, then what is the procedure? Do oh, do they need to fill in the off campus form or something like that? No, oh, that one uh, <laughs> that one is too detailed for me. Uh, the the off campus form. Uh, um, that that one I have to discuss with uh, Mahala. Uh, another one for for the, those because you are uh, previously there's question about those who are not vaccinated. Uh, if you are not vaccinated, you will not be allowed to uh, to stay in Mahala. 
Sir, yeah. when I come to Malaysia, should I stay in Mahalle or uh, I have already rented home? Uh, can I stay in my home or should I stay in Mahalle? The ideal is for you to stay in the university in the Mahalle. Okay. Sir, you yeah. you mentioned that if Kunya decided uh want to open additional classes, uh you will announce it in the platforms, right? I want to ask the possibility of that happen. Is it high or low for new uh, classes open to for for students uh, who I, gain I, management? I did not look at the data, so I'm not able to answer whether the possibility is high or low. I think if I can answer on that, uh, inshallah, I think every department is actually working on that to ensure that all the students in the reserve leave, reserve, uh, reserve leave will be able to enter the classes. So for department accounting, for example, I think we have managed to resolve all the students in the reserve list. So you don't have to worry. I think you will be able to have your classes soon for you to, to start your semester two. And I believe that other departments are also looking on that to ensure that we are able to manage all the students in the reserve list. So I think, uh, inshallah, I think you will be able to have your section, either at the section or I think we will work out on that, like whether we increase the existing section. And as mentioned by uh, Prof Dean just now, uh, if the numbers are more than 35 students, then I think what we'll do, we'll, we'll divide into two groups. So every week we will meet only one group uh, for the two days. So what we will do every week, we will have to ensure that there be one face-to-face -face classes for the students, for all the students. So that what we plan to do if we talk about the numbers are more than 35 like in, in each uh, class. So I, I hope I have answered that question. Yes, thank you very much. Another is, uh, will the fees will be discounted also for next semester? No, not that I know of. <laughs> I think no change, right? On the fees. Yeah. Not that I know of. Uh, uh, I don't think there is any discussion on that. Okay, so, regarding to sister uh, question, when it, will the Mahala registration going to open? Uh, the dean will have a meeting with the Mahala tomorrow. And, uh, on the answer, when it will be open, it will be announced later, inshallah, when the dean have, have uh, informed MSS, then MSS will announce to the students. But it's not tomorrow. Tomorrow is the meeting between dean and the mahalla. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. So I've gotten a few students who are DMing me, and I think uh, I will not be able to type uh, just in case, but I'm not sure when you DM'd me, but if it's been already answered by the Dean. Regarding those who are not vaccinated, unvaccinated, not yet, don't want to, whichever, okay, you are allowed to come back to the kuliah. It's just that you are not allowed to stay at the mahala. You're not allowed to apply. Uh, I mean, you can try, but they will ask for all the, uh, and they will reject you. So, I mean, because there are quite a few who are DMing me and saying, is there any way for unvaccinated students to come without being vaccinated? So I think I need to mention this, that we're not going to deny anyone's right for education. Nah. You can come back to the kundia, but you must stay outside and you must always self-test regularly and the costs will be borne by yourself. Isn't that right? Just now I think yeah. the dean has mentioned that, but since yeah. you are still missing, oh, oh, we, can sure add, more, if, we can add more condition. They have to wear PPE. PPE to, to oh, sorry, I couldn't type the answers. I think it's easier if I just say it. Okay, it's just too many to, to answer. Thanks. Uh, that, that's just a joke. We, we, because we, we did have a discussion just a few hours ago. So we say who those who are not vaccinated have, have to come with a PPE to class. Uh, so, uh, if is booster needed for the Mahala placement? Ah, Allah, yang tu tak tahu. Rasanya tak boleh. Yeah, uh, I, I don't think the, I don't think booster is needed. But don't quote on me on, on that. <laughs> but, but I don't think uh, I'm quite <laughs> quite sure lah. Uh, as long as you have been vaccinated to doses. Uh, I believe uh, sister questions 
for students who never return to campus and never register for Mahalla, are they allowed to register Mahalla through online? Who never, who never return, so never or never come to campus lah. First time. Yeah, so first time. Yeah, the so first time pun I have to discuss with ah, uh, I have to discuss with Mahalla. Uh, how how do they register? Yeah. Okay, so uh, if any one of you have any questions, just ask and, and just open up your mic. If it is much more convenient than typing in the chat box. Hey, sorry, I have one question. Eh? Uh, Assalamualaikum, doctor. Uh, I just want to know like about the credit hours, uh, 20 credit hours as a maximum, right? So uh, like you said, the priority will be given to accounting students. So, uh, in other words, does that mean like BBA, Bex, and uh, Islamic finance students will not be allowed to take more than 20 credit hours? Uh, no. Okay, so what, what I said is that, uh, what, okay, uh, we have to look at the whole uh, holistically. So, one is for accounting students, their credit hours to graduate is, I think, it's about 150 something. So because it is 150 something, so uh, they will have to take more than uh, more than 20 in order for them to graduate on time. Okay, so because of that, we are thinking of uh, uh, for accounting students, we are thinking of uh, increasing that maximum from 20 to uh, from 20 to 21. So that's for accounting. For uh, for the other program, so it's going to be a case to case basis. Uh, okay. We are going to see why is it that you want to take more than uh, more than twenty credit hours. Okay. Uh, if let's say the reason is uh, uh, if the rationale is okay, then we, then we allow you to take uh, 20, more than twenty credit hours. Okay. But if let's say you uh, you want to take it just because you want to take it, okay, there is no strong reason for it, then we will not. We will not allow you to take uh, more than 20 credit hours. If let's say, uh, for example, uh, this is your last semester yeah, and you need to take more than 20 credit hours. So, and most probably we are going to allow you to take more than uh, more than 20 credit hours. So, but there is a limit okay, for, for how much uh, how much you can take. Nah? Okay, because in the end, what is going to happen again, I see, I say uh, because our program uh accredited by MQA. So we have to follow that MQA regulation. Because MQA is going to come and audit and see uh, the credit hours that taken by the student. So if let's say uh, they found out that you take more than 20 credit hours, and then when we look at the reason why you take, uh, and when they look at the reason why you take more than 20 credit hours, is not very strong, then the uh, then the kuliah is going to get into pro problem. If the kuliah get into problem, the whole batch is going to get into problem. Okay, what is the problem? What is going to be the problem? Okay, and they may be able to uh, take away the accreditation. So what is going to happen if they take away the accreditation? For sure, you will not be able to apply. To, uh, if you are Malaysian, you are not be. You will not be able. To apply for government job, okay? and some companies will not hire a program that are not accredited. So that's why we really have to look at the. Uh, we really have to follow the the MQA regulations. So we may allow you to take more than twenty credit hours, but the reason have to be uh, have to be very strong. Okay, um, understood that, but I just want to know because uh, whether this. Um, 20 credit hours as the maximum uh, credit hours for uh, next semester. Is it going to be applied for the following semester? Because yeah, it's, it, yeah, it is uh, because that is the regular that is under the student academic performance evaluation evaluation rules. Okay, okay yeah. because um, actually, I have an issue here. I'm an international student, so I, I have an issue with uh military from my country uh, whereby i am give i am given i am allowed to study until may 2023 so yeah so if, if let's say there are strong reason then we'll then we'll have to look at the reason 
Yeah, but the problem is I I cannot give that proof during uh for me when when I uh fill up the Google form. So um uh, I have already emailed to KENMS about this uh issue of me of mine, as well as the proof of the uh, military letter lah, which justify why I need to um add more than twenty credit hours for next semester. If you can consider on this matter. Okay, I think I, I think I, I have your email. I got your email. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, so uh, thank you, Brother Siraj. And then uh, one brother asked, what is the minimum credit hours? So starting this semester, the minimum credit hour is 12. Uh, um, minimum is, uh, minimum yes. is 12. So uh, before this, it, it is 15, but uh, starting this sem uh, next semester, it is 12. And uh, maybe on behalf of the students, I have a question like, uh, is it 12? considered as the list or we still need yes. 15 credit hour or 12 yeah. already considered yeah, yeah, yeah it's still the list all right so okay but if you take 12 it's going to take a long time for you to graduate huh? yeah okay uh so and then you may have to take more than more uh, more than 20 credit hours in the subsequent semester Okay, so thank you, sir. So, uh, uh, then another question for disabled students. If they want to register for Mahalla, is there any special facility that they can request? Maybe like- uh, I students? think you, you, can, you can talk to the Disability Services Unit. Oh, all right. So, yeah, minimum 12 credit hour is applied for, is, is starting, credit hour is uh, eligible for next semester or it is starting yeah, right semester. now only next semester or is it already applied for for the whole uh, i i'm not sure it's always been minimum uh, yeah minimum have been, was increased to 15 some time ago I think yeah, now we have 12 credit hours only. So, because when you want to drop, also we'll look into that minimum yeah. before we can allow you to withdraw or to drop. All right, thank you. So, if you if the students have any questions, left just ask. So, maybe right now it's near Maghrib in Malaysia. So, I want to ask the dean, well, when do you plan to? to end the session if there are no any questions. Is there any question? There are some chats to the... I can go up to Maghrib. <laughs> oh, somebody's asking, will there be a tour to the campus for new students who have never experienced physical classes? MCS? How are you doing? Okay, so uh, on behalf of MCS, uh, maybe, maybe if the students, maybe Maybe if the kuliah office approve uh, during Insan Sejahtera, maybe we can have a session for the students who attend physically in the campus. Maybe we can include them also in the yeah, Insan definitely. Sejahtera. Definitely, we, we will have. Yeah, of course, of course. Okay. Like, these are the students yang we will have Insan Sejahtera for the new students. This is like uh -huh. not so new, a bit yeah. stale, yeah. but new. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, we, we may not? have to go yeah, of course, of course. Nak kena ada some type of ta'aru. Yeah, ta'aru untuk tahu ini toilet. Ha. Room. Yeah. But you are talking about ta'aru for how many students? 1,200 students. Yeah, uh, we will work it out. <laughs> Sir, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, if the minimum credit cover is uh, 12, uh, for me, uh, my my register subject is all totally twelve point five credit hours, including one subject under reserve. So, uh, can I can I just say the same? Uh, will my reserve subject subject will be included? Uh, breaking up. I am not. Uh, it's not clear. What is your question? Oh, okay. okay, my my total register credit hour for this semester is twelve. 12.5, including reserve subject. So, uh, my question is, do my, is my reserve subject will be included in the next semester? Uh, 
cannot. Oh, and the, the mini the minimum is twelve, so there is no issue. Okay. Uh, without without the reserve subject, my credit table will be nine point five. Oh, so without oh, so it is twelve with the reserve. Uh, you you'll need to register more than twelve. Okay, sir. So, my my question is: uh, Do the reserve subject will be added to the next semester? I think if we can allocate the section for for you, then the reserve subject will be added to your uh to your subjects. So, meaning that you are asking whether the reserve subject for this semester will be included in the next semester, is it? Uh no, ma'am. Uh, sorry. My, my next semester is for second year. Okay. So, uh, the total the total register credit award is twelve point five, including the reserve one. Okay. I think inshallah, I think we will. I mean, you have to really, I mean, follow up with us with, with the academic office to ensure that you'll be able to meet at least that twelve credit hours. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, madam, could I ask you one question? Sorry. Yes. Uh, my graduated uh, semester is short semester. Okay. And uh, I have one subject left, which is I cannot register because it's limited. They say uh, over overload. So it's possible that I can take it, or you will add one long semester for only one subject. Is that logic, or it could be heaven? How many credit hours that you will you already register for next uh, semester? Nineteen. And I have one, um, and my graduate uh, semester is short. Uh, I mean, for I mean for next semester, short. I mean for next short semester. So you have one more short sem, right? Yes. So this subject will not be over in short semester. Is it possible that I will take one long semester for one subject? I think you can try to register for next sem for the exit the the minimum the maximum workload. Can you try that to fit in the form? Yeah, I did, but there is no response. I think my office actually has been receiving a lot of uh, application for that, and we are working on it. So I think we will be contacting the students soon, inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you, madam. Okay. But if you need, if you really need to mention your reason or why you need to add that additional. Okay. Thank you, madam. Can we return after mid semester break? <laughs> Because uh, the visa process and all will take much longer, and uh, we'll be relaxed to come back if we have like a week in between to come and settle down there. So, can we actually come after mid sem break, like during mid sem break? If you are no, if you don't have any issue with traveling restriction or health issue, you have to come uh, by the start of the semester. Uh, sir, uh, actually, we have to renew our uh, well, you know, the visa approval letter. Yeah, that's why I say, if, if you don't have uh, traveling restriction, if you have traveling restriction, then uh, then you have traveling restriction. Uh, then, we, uh, then we have to think about the online thing, online arrangement. Okay, so after, you. after you settle your traveling uh, restriction, then you'll be able to, uh, you, have to uh, you have to come to campus. Okay, so I'll take uh, online classes for the time being, and then after coming, I'll transfer to face-to-face -face class. Okay. Yeah. Yes. No okay, thanks. Where can we? Where can we get our metric card? Oh, betul juga tu. I don't. There's a lot of thing that we have to discuss with our penamani lah with uh, metric card. Excellent, Mahala. Yeah. Awesome. Yes. Awesome security, yeah. by the way. Yes. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> awesome. O S E M. Apa lagi ni? Is internship available for both long sem and short sem? Internship you can you can discuss with your department lah. Internship coordinator. Yeah. Uh, can we opt for home quarantine at Mahalah? No. Uh, so for for quarantine, you cannot have a uh, the the mahala cannot offer that quarantine. Sir, yeah, uh, I want to ask again because I think I uh, misunderstood. Uh, there is mis misunderstanding from my side. Uh, 
uh, is staying mahalle compul- compulsory required for students because I already have home uh, in all all of uh, campus and I am already paying. Uh, I am al- already doing payment monthly, although I am not in Malaysia. Okay, so if you, you if you don't want to stay in Mahala, I think uh, they they are students who are staying off campus. You, you, you can stay off campus if you want. <laughs> 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 you busy here muting people? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Is it possible for KM students to stay in other mahala? Yeah. Yeah. Boleh. Nak kenapa nak yang jauh yang dekat ada? <laughs> <laughs> Is it possible to apply internship before I finish my course? Ah, uh, ni that you can discuss with your department about internship. Can KNM stay can stay in any mahal of sama juga. Is internship available where can we get our metric card for batch 201 onward? Ni apa, apa soalannya ni? <laughs> can we opt for quarantine? Okay. I think we've covered all. Are there any questions that we have not read? Because it's quite a lot. And... Yes. Angkat so, tangan ke? Okay, so so uh, on behalf of MSS, the recording for this session, we will Insyaallah we'll upload it in KNMS TV YouTube, so the students can can refer it any times that they want. Ayah nak cari tu. Ayah. And then, uh, Insyaallah we we'll also post a FAQ, FAQ yeah, for this session, right? So there are one question from brother: What will happen with my reserve subject? I answered just now. Insyaallah. Yeah. Uh, so, so the reserve subject we will uh, handle by department. So, inshallah, soon uh, your your reserve subject will be will be announced by the department lah. Yeah. Okay, so, you, you, uh, most of probably you'll be given the subject lah. Mm. You'll be unreserved. So, from sister, those who are already in Mahalla, can we change our Mahalla? So, I believe this you need to refer to the Mahalla. Uh, maybe MRC or RSD, so yeah. we need to follow the procedure of change of mahalla since the procedure is already existed before. Everyone is looking rather gloomy, or maybe it's just your profile picture. So <laughs> on a lighter note, you're all excited not to come back. Uh, and uh, yeah. inshallah, we'll, be, we'll keep each other safe. No one would want any of their students to be affected or exposed. You're all like our children. Even more so, since you're not our children, it's even more dangerous, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's a big responsibility. It's very, very huge. So you should, I mean, we hope that you understand why sometimes it takes us a while to issue announcements because there's just so many things to consider. But you can see that the MSS members are very, very um, helpful, accommodating. If there's any issues, you can just contact them. Then they will definitely uh, bring whatever issues you have uh, to me and then I will share with the with the rest. Okay. Okay. Yeah, one question about cafe. Oh, penting. <laughs> okay. Can I ask cafe? Yeah. Inshallah. <laughs> if we have the student, then we have the cafe. Yeah. Demand and supply. They, they're always asking supply. one or <laughs> If they are you guys there, don't worry, they'll definitely when you have a lot of people, uh, yeah. but then you still have to maintain uh, SOP. Lah. So uh if there are not any questions from the students, I, I believe we can end this session. So uh for the information for the students, this town hall session will be conducted monthly. So we will have another town hall next month, but of course with uh, different topics and different many issues that we want to discuss. So uh, on behalf of the students, okay, so I know, okay, so GSM, GSM is Graduate School of Management. Okay, so before this, it is uh, IIBF, but it's already replaced by GSM. So no, no worry, GSM will not replace KNMS. 
KNMS is KNMS, GSM is GSM uh, G- GSM is under KNMS Ah yes, yeah, GSM is under KNMS So Okay, so On behalf of the students, I want to thanks The Dean, Dr. Gary uh, Deputy Dean, Dr. Iziani And Deputy Dean, Dr. Noraini For willingly attend and accommodate The, que- the students, uh, the question from the students Uh, I believe the recording will be uploaded soon and the FAQ also will be shared to the students soon. So that's all for today. We end our session today with Tasbika Farah Asralas. Thank you, Dr. Farah. Thank you, Dr. Farah. So before we end our session, uh, can can we take a picture? Yeah. <laughs> Right now, it's important for us to have evidence <laughs> for everything that we do. All right, so uh, okay, I will take the picture. So if those for those who able to open their camera, you can open. If you cannot open, then it's okay. So I will. Okay, so Dr. Izan is on the phone. Okay, so one. Okay, so one, two, three. One, one, two, three. All right. So thank you, everyone. See you thank soon. You. Hopefully next semester during physical for those we can come back. So bye. Salam. Alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you.